Oh, oh, yeah. We got to watch this because I didn't get to actually watch this video. But there's so much more behind the reason why we're watching this video right here. Mr. Beast was at it again. The white devil himself. The devil. At it again. All right. This this horrible, horrible, villainous man gave 20,000 pairs of shoes to kids in Africa. How could he dare do such a thing? Yeah, I want to watch the video and then we're going to talk about the reason why I just said all that shit. For hundreds of thousands of kids in South Africa, the only thing standing between them and an education is a simple pair of shoes. Let me explain. Because of the extreme poverty in rural towns, walking to school barefoot is the only option, which means they have to walk for miles over harsh terrain, broken glass, and contaminated water. Yo, that's, an, that's no lie right there. Miles. Like you, you, we all can make the jokes about like, you know, our, our grandparents or even parents, things like that. I used to have to walk to school 10 miles, 10 miles a day in the raging heat, snow, uphill, over glass bottles. Well, truly, these kids do have to do that. And in fact, it's such a horrible situation that I want you to think about something here. Walking in and of itself is something that puts a lot of stresses on the body and different things. Uh, even running can as well, even though, yes, it does strengthen, but over the course of time, it does start putting severe, you know, um, stresses on different forms or different areas of the body including the knees the lower back so on and so forth but shoes typically take a lot of that that pressure off based on the way that they're made now in this case this is much much worse because these children are walking barefoot in a place where you might think it's just well it's just dirt and sand or you know whatever no that's not the case there are rocks there's glass there's cans there's you know uh needles pit like Anything and everything you can imagine, but the worst being walking through contaminated water. Back in uh, Vietnam and in other wars as well, the actual the military would actually tell the soldiers to take extra pairs of socks. And the reason why is because if the insides of your boots got wet and they stayed that way, you could get a lot of different diseases from that. So you always wanted to have clean socks clean shoes, dry shoes, you know, stuff like that. So now we're talking about children who are trying to simply go to school and can't make it to school because of the fact that they're walking barefoot miles to actually get there. But before tackling this major problem by donating 20,000 pairs of shoes, we flew to Johannesburg, South Africa, to a charity called Barefoot No More that uses these plastic granules, and then it goes through all these tubes and does a bunch of other complicated mechanical stuff that eventually creates the perfect seamless shoe. Whoa, these are actually really nice. He said, he said seamless? So... See, I wonder if you mean, well, I understand, like, there's two different ways it could be using this, but the way I'm thinking, and I want to see the shoes more up close, but if you thought about seamless, like, no seams, anything like that, any way that they could actually tear or anything, that that's absolutely brilliant. The things kind of look comfortable. Those those remind me of the shoes that uh, a lot of people I know who work in healthcare or in uh, the restaurant industry, stuff like that, they wear those shoes. They're like, they, or those types of shoes, because they're so comfortable and it allows them to stay on their feet for eight plus hours a day and not have a lot of the issues that they would if they're wearing, you know, uh, the everyday types of shoes that we that we normally wear. And they're usually slip resistant, et cetera, et cetera. So. Then Darren and the team quickly boxed up the shoes and we headed to Cape Town to find the schools whose students are in the most desperate need of help where we met Gabriella and Roswell, two junior school teachers in a rural village who have devoted their entire lives to educating underprivileged kids. You would not begin to imagine what our kids have to go through on a normal day. To them, domestic violence is definitely normal at home. These yeah. schools not only offer an opportunity to learn, but also a safe haven where students are protected. Did you see that? I mean, look at this. 
Uh, I hate showing this. If you if you weaken the stomach, don't don't look right now because I'm showing this. Again. Schools not only offer an opportunity to learn, but also a safe haven where students. The split right there in the foot, potentially infection. I mean, usually when something like this happens in the toenail uh, beds, it's because infection actually seeps into the bed of the toenail, and I mean this could be a very very serious issue. Hey yo, Bozo the clown. Hey. You know what you can do with yourself. You you really do. What an idiot. What an idiot little... You're just an idiot little fuck. That's all you are. Sorry. Somebody on YouTube. You always get those types. So are protected in these dangerous communities. One of the biggest challenges is actually getting the kids to school. Our learners have to walk miles and miles just to get to school. It can be a struggle with all the thorns and needles. I wouldn't go to school. I can be a great Hell person. Hell no, I wouldn't go to school either, shit. It's up to nobody. Despite all of the difficulties that these kids face at home, to hear that they're not coming to school because they don't have school shoes is just heartbreaking. I can't wait for these shoes to arrive to see what a big difference it's going to make. The next day, the shoes arrived and the team quickly got to work by setting up at nine different schools all across Cape Town. While so nine schools, 20,000 kids. That That's fucking... That's something else. That is that is huge. Twenty thousand. I mean, what was it? Last time he did it, he uh, uh, helped cure blindness for a thousand people. Now he's giving twenty thousand pairs of shoes to little kids. This guy's the fucking devil. Aaron and the team raced to set up everything in time. I want to tell you about the sponsor, Electric E Bikes. They helped us pay for tens of thousands of shoes going to people in need. Electric E Bikes is an awesome company full of incredible people. They have come on board. The word got out quickly, and according to the teachers, the schools were more packed than they've ever been, with school kids eager to get a pair of shoes. So Darren and the team had to work extra hard to ensure that every single kid got their own pair of shoes. The kids this morning all came walking in without any shoes on. They need the shoes. And I cannot wait to see the smile on these kids' faces. <laughs> Yo. Do you know do you know how crazy that is? I mean, think about it. Was there any point in time in your life that you did not have the ability to have a pair of shoes? Usually like a new school year comes around, your parents are like, "All right, we got to get you a new pair of shoes, maybe two pairs of shoes, different stuff like that." Th this is something that we on a day-to-day -day basis take absolutely for granted, but don't realize that in other countries it's something that Hey, you can't afford them. You just can't have them. That's just it. You struck. It came down to the wire, but we were able to reach our goal. Oh, uh -huh. that's f to witness Yo, these kids, kids, kids smile like that. That shit is great. Shoes was really emotional, and again, a realization of first the basic needs that most of us take for granted. Yep. Yeah. For most people, this is very hard to understand. For using something as simple as a pair of school shoes to change my learners' lives for the better. And just to see a smile for a pair of shoes, you would think they got a brand new PlayStation 5 or Xbox or something. It makes your heart power. Yo, it's a blessing. It's something I'll never forget. It's one of the best days of my life. Please forget me. What you have done here at my school is absolutely amazing. <laughs> Yo, that right oh, there. Thank you. So thank you, Beast Philanthropy. All right, all right, all right. That that's good. Here's the dark side of it. Once again, after making a video like this, people have decided to go ahead and hit Twitter, buy droves, say all the, the ridiculous shit that, you know, people on Twitter say. Mr. Beast, he's a devil, he's trash, he's a horrible human being for helping these individuals out. In fact, let's go ahead and take a quick look at some of the stuff that people said on Twitter about this video. Now, this first one, I looked at this and I'm like, wait a minute, come on, this man's got to be, I don't know, something's wrong here. 
Okay, but wouldn't it be better for them to continue not wearing shoes? Our indigenous in Australia have much better time trekking the land, barefoot and other struggles because of always wearing shoes. I hate shoes myself and never wear them. Stops us from exchanging energies. Listen, you can take this energy transfer with Gaia, Mother Earth, whatever you want to call it, and shove it straight up, you, you know. Yeah, go ahead. Just take it all right up there in the culo. Because look, fam, the bottom line to it is these kids are not just trekking through sand and dirt and things like that. It's glass all over the place. Broken bottles, uh, you know, uh, needles and everything else that I said. Plus, there are actual flies and different insects and things that are flesh-eating insects that burrow into these children's feet. And it causes life-threatening issues. The stagnant water that sits in some places in Africa that they're trekking through alone. Have one cut if you want to. Next thing you know, they've got some disease that's absolutely incurable because they don't have means, uh, like the actual financial means or access to the medication that's necessary in order to help save their lives. This type of comment right here is absolutely asinine. You should have actually taken the time to look at the video for what it was. A young man who was trying to actually help in a way that others don't think about ha uh, helping. And it goes even farther where there's so much different crap here on, t uh, uh, on Twitter where they are literally dunking on Mr. Beast for doing this. In fact, another one here, this one was asinine. He could have done a bit more. Shoes aren't worth much. Well, to a child who's never had shoes a day in their life, shoes are worth everything, especially if it allows them to walk to school to get an education that will potentially better their lives and pull them out of the situation that they're currently in. People like to have this whole you know, thought process or, or insight to say that someone should have been doing something more than what it is that they did, when in fact, what have you actually taken the time to do in order to better someone else's lives or the world at large? The problem with all of these Twitter trolls, they're the same individuals who go off and say things like, oh, why do these billionaires have all this money and they're not doing anything to save, uh, to save others? They're just taking all the money for themselves. All this capitalism is a fucking horrible thing. Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos are very prime examples of individuals on Twitter screaming for billionaires or those with greater means to go off and do something and make some form of a change. And now you have a young man, it, what, Jimmy is somewhere in his mid-20s at this point, I believe, who's decided to take his own money, not asking for your money, but take his own money and create it a philanthropy channel, an entire philanthropic organization, in fact. If you guys don't know, that video is not from his main channel. It's from Beast Philanthropy. That channel, everything that goes into it is actually taken. Now, from what I understand, I am not his, his accountant. I am not his lawyer. I am none of those things. But from what I understand, everything that he does with that channel, it all 100% goes back into the philanthropy the philanthropic side of his business. Not only that, but he's actually taken millions to start that up as well. Now, what people really want to, you know, dunk on him about and, you know, give shit all of, you know, shit all over Mr. Beast and his organization about is the fact that these things are being shown in such a manner that they feel that he's taking advantage of these individuals. Well, here's what I can tell you. Every UNICEF commercial or Red Cross commercial that you ever see on the television shows images of children who are sick, dying, covered in flies and gnats and other types of things. But you don't think enough to actually go ahead and say, oh, maybe there's a problem with that. All of a sudden, it's a problem because this young man who isn't making money off of this is actually taking the money and giving it right back to these individuals. Now it's a problem. These are the same people who go off and say that we need to do more to save others, but don't do anything at all. They're nothing but lip service. That's all it is.
I want to eat ice cream if you want to run. Uh, yeah, we're going to in a minute. But this is this is a this is the problem. People are so cynical and so lost in their own bullshit that they don't take the time to think that maybe the greater good is being served in this situation. Maybe that's the case. Instead, they just want something to just bitch about. They want to be negative about something. They want to be cynical about something. They want to feel like they're superior to another individual. The, the One of the craziest things that I think someone said on Twitter was, why does a, hold on. Why does a white Western man have to come in and play savior to these kids in South Africa? Well, how about we go ahead and take, at the larger, take a look at the larger picture here. What has the South African government done for these children in order to resolve this issue? Seemingly nothing. That's a fact. What have these other organizations such as UNICEF and the Red Cross and things of that nature, what have they done in order to help these children in this very, very simple manner? Nothing. And if you take a look at these organizations, they actually take 80% of the donations that come in to them, and it goes towards administrative fees. So only 20% of the actual money that you are donating to these groups, if you even take the time to do so, is even going towards helping anyone. How could it be possible that you want to say that it's negative for a young man to take 100% of the profits that he's making from a channel, which may make hundreds of thousands or millions? How can you say there's anything wrong with him taking 100% of that and putting it towards the greater good? If you do that, you're pretty much a trash individual. That's all there is to it. And that's just a fact. So, yeah, you guys can go ahead and let me know what you think on that. Leave it in the comments or go ahead right now and chat. Let me know what you think on that situation. All I have to say is I see nothing wrong with it because companies do this all the time. Organizations, larger organizations than his do this all the time. And it's not something that's new. It's something they've been doing for years. It's so awful to see those kids smile after getting their first pair of shoes. Oh, my God. How horrible is Mr. Beast? Yeah, that's all I got to say on that.